Uh, I went to uh, Retro Game Con in Syracuse. It was fucking awesome. I bought a bunch of video games that I couldn't afford. I got an original copy of Silent Hill, uh, and I'm just so happy about that. Uh, went to some panels, saw David Rodriguez, he talked about writing for video games and Diablo 4 and shit. One person asked him a really stupid question, which I was shocked about. I was expecting a lot more than that. That's why my brother and I avoided the Mike Pollock panel. Uh, and I also got to meet John St. John, and I shook his hand and got his autograph. And uh, I'm kind of wondering at what point I need to wash it. But, you know, once the mushrooms start growing out, we'll uh, we'll deal with that then. Did I ask him to make Postal Dude impressions? I actually asked him... <coughs> excuse me. I actually asked him what it was like working with Running With Scissors to do Postal Dude. And he told me that uh, he actually really didn't. They sent him the lines and he recorded in his own house, in his own little sound booth that he has set up, and he just sent him out. He Postal Dude is his exact speaking voice. He, he didn't change it at all. He did say that. He sounds exactly the same as Postal Dude sounds in 4. And he is just an awesome fucking person all around. I couldn't have been happier meeting him. They say don't meet your idols, but yeah, I'm... So far, I'm one for one on proving that one wrong. Told him I wanted to be a voice actor, and uh, told him that I live in the middle of nowhere and I don't really have the money to go anywhere where the jobs are, but I'm not going to give up, and he said that was good, and to keep trying. So I'm going to. I have to live up to uh, Mr. St. John's expectations now. Two for two? What other person did I meet? We met at... <laughs> oh, no. See, I don't know how many of these stories I'm allowed to tell before they start getting offensive to people. Uh, we met an extremely uh, ADHD autistic person dressed as Ash Ketchum from Pokemon who was playing the part, uh, to be fair to him. He was in character. He was... He was very interesting to talk with uh, while I was trying to purchase some Pokemon cards from a vendor. He was very... So many people there were so excited to be there just to get out of their houses and, you know, be in a place where they can fit in and belong with other people. And you can't fault anyone for that. Everyone wants that sense of community. Even the weirdest people. That's why furries have conventions. And that's a wonderful thing. But uh, some of them are just... You kind of just have to laugh a little bit, even though you feel bad, because it's so zany. It's not to be offensive or to, to be mean to them, it's just because it's so unexpected. There was... I think it was a girl. It might have been a boy. We were at a vendor going through video games. Oh my god, I'm getting raided by a... A cookie raid! I had to get rid of my cookie jar, I was eating too much of them. Well, holy shit, I appreciate the raid. Thank you. I'm just talking about the convention I went to over the weekend. Oh, uh, while I try and figure out what I was doing next in the video game. So yeah, Retro Game Con in Syracuse. There was... <laughs> there was a girl who came up to a counter and... She just... She had like a little bucket of G Fuel with her? And she was just freaking out, talking about how awesome G Fuel was. And she was, like, caffeinated out of her skull, just about. <laughs> she walked away, and the vendor and I and my brother all kind of looked at each other and just, like, whew. There, were, there was such an energy going to, to that. Always meet your hero. I can say that the hero I met was perfect. Oh, God! Yes, the vendor who understands card grading. Yes! Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be something specific that only uh, people who are into trading cards will really understand, but I will try to explain. Card phrases are generated based on the quality of the card. But anyway, the guy who understands card grading for the third time after I interrupted myself twice. He had a really nice Heart Gold Soul Silver era shiny Ho-Oh for like 70 bucks. It was probably worth that. But he had this... Oh my god, what card was it? Was it... 
Lati I think it was a Latias from some set that was really nice. But this card was fucked up. Yeah, it was a Plasma Latias. This card was damaged to fuck. And damaged cards don't sell for a ton because they're damaged. They're still worth money, but not the premium that you would get from a really high quality card. And the, he wanted $30 for this card that was super damaged. And even looking up for, like, the actual price of an average condition card was only, like, 17 bucks. So my brother, my brother, my fucking brother, talked to him and said, Hey, is the price on this right? This is a little high. This card's really fucked up. And the guy looks at him straight-faced and he says, Oh, yeah, I, I try to price based on, braced on... I try to price based on grade. Because... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of all of that, and that card's worth quite a bit. I know it is. I, I understand how the grading system works. Like, and he would not go down on it. I think he went down $2. <laughs> My brother just put it back. <laughs> like, he just couldn't understand the logic that this guy was coming at him with. Like, this card's in good condition. This card's got a fucking crease running through it. It's been bent in half.